Okay, so today on this and that, I'm gonna be showing you how to replace the radiator fan on a Yamaha Viking. This is a 2014 or 15, can't quite remember exactly what year, but they're all the same from 14 on up. Um, Yamaha Viking 700 uh, EFI. This one has the EPS, the electronic power steering on it. Uh, what had happened was, is the fan in the back here went bad and I didn't realize it and the unit started to overheat. So we gotta get this fan out. And while I'm at it, I'm gonna take the radiator out. I'll flush the radiator fluid. I'll take the radiator out. I'll clean out the, the fins and replace the fan and put it back in and bleed it and kind of walk you through that process there. Okay, a couple things you can do to test to make sure that you know it is actually the fan and not something else. It's pretty easy to spot the fan fuse. Uh, they have it pretty well labeled there. That's a 25 amp fuse. You flip this cover up, check it. I checked it, uh, it was fine. Here is the relay for one of the, re there's two relays for it. Um, this relay here is the main one though for the fan itself. So it's gonna, once it reaches, there's a temp sensor in there that once it hits a certain temp, it sends a signal to this to kick on uh, power to the actual fan itself, right? So. You can test these out with a with a voltmeter or an ohmmeter or whatever and make sure you're getting what you need to out of that. I actually tested just to make sure that the fuse itself wasn't bad. I pulled the fuse even though you could, it looked fine-ish. It was kind of burned on one end a little bit. Uh, I So I tested it anyway and it was fine. Uh, and then the easiest, honestly, the easiest way to figure it out is just reach your hand in down in there. I came coming through the wheel side there. and. Uh, try to spin the fan if the fan doesn't spin super freely you know like super easily uh, if it like kind of chunks when you're when you're spinning it or it feels like it's grabbing it all that's an easy sign you really don't have to test anything else out because um, that is the problem again you know these fans are known to cause issues on these units uh, they're not watertight for whatever reason it is a manufacturing defect um, so you can save yourself a lot of trouble diagnosing something uh, just by reaching your hand down there and, and flipping the fan around because uh, nine times out of ten that's going to be the problem. Okay, so Yamaha actually recommends that you, or it tells you step one, to drain the coolant, the overflow reservoir there um, for the radiator. Luckily, or unluckily I suppose, mine's already drained as you can see because it exploded all over the place when it overheated. So. Uh, I guess there's maybe a benefit uh, to that slightly. Silver lining, perhaps, I don't know. But anyhow, uh, they'd want you to take this hose off, open this lid up, and it should it would drain out on its own. So that would be step one. Um, also, they'll want you to undo the radiator cap when you do that. So airflow can get, you know, from the top, basically to the bottom there. That'll be the lowest point of the vehicle back there. Uh, where that drain bolt is so uh, we can kind of go at it that way the next step is to move to the back passenger side of the yamaha and remove this plastic covering that is covering up where the drain bolt is for the radiator fluid so there are a total of uh the two 10 millimeter bolts here and then there's four of those uh uh, fender fastening type screws. So you take those out, this will slide out. So I've got some more mud in behind there. <clears throat> but this will open up the area that you need to get to the uh, drainage bolts for the radiator fluid. I'm gonna go ahead and clean some of this up. Okay, so right here is the coolant drainage bolt. I actually marked it with a Sharpie, just so you can kind of see where it is. It's right at the bottom. Uh, where the radiator hose kind of comes in at the lowest point of the motor there So Yamaha says to remove that bolt let it drain into a pan and once again, you don't want to have this stuff around for uh, You want to make sure you dispose of it properly because if a pet or something gets into it. It gets yeah, it could kill them Okay, well, so I have the bolt unscrewed but it doesn't want to actually come all the way out because it's hitting the frame uh, where the engine's mounted there, so I guess it's just gonna be a long, slow drain out of there, which is kind of insane. But I'm not gonna move the, I'm not gonna unbolt the engine to get it up to where I need to be. There's no 
there's no hole for it to slide in here. That's kind of an interesting, no mention of that in the manual. That's an interesting little setup. Plus it wants you to replace the copper washer, but you can't get that out, um, you know, as is. So we'll uh, let it drain for a while. I definitely won't be filming all of that because we could just watch this for a couple hours. Okay, so the next step will be to remove the thermostat. Uh, once it overheats, the pin kind of hangs open on it and allows too much coolant to flow through. It's just two eight millimeter bolts on top and below. So just remove those. Okay, O-ring, uh, the moment of truth. Let's see if we can get this out of here. Seated. This is what I was really concerned about because again, it said that this thing could pin itself open and basically be a uh, useless thermostat at that point. Okay, so here we are looking at this, a uh, little better view than, than previously. Uh, the thermostat's out, the temperature sensor's in behind there. That's what actually, you know, kicks the relay over to turn the fan on. Um, so that's nice we didn't have to mess with it because I really didn't want to touch it if I didn't have to. So we'll uh, take a look at these thermostats side by side here. Okay, so here's the thermostats. Here are the thermostats sitting side by side. The uh, old ones on the right, the new ones on the, the left. Um, yeah, I mean, looks to me like this one on the right is actually open a bit. Um, which would signify that, you know, that pin in there is kind of hanging up. So um, it's a good thing I guess I replaced it because that could have been a real problem. So I uh, wanted to take a quick video of the thermostat uh, housing cover uh, while it was off the, the Yamaha. So it'll sit in there like that. This is actually the bleeder uh, bolt. So when you go to fill this back up, Yamaha has you uh, open up the bottom bolt, not the drain bolt, it's actually above the, the drain bolt where we drain all the fluid. Uh, and I'll show you where that is when we do it. And then wait till fluid comes out of that. And then once that's done, you go up here and open that up uh, and wait till some fluid comes out of that and then tighten it back down. Uh, and then, you know, we'll go through the rest of the process. But I just wanted to show you an up close of what bolt you're looking for when you go to bleed the air out of the system uh, at the thermostat housing. Okay, so next step would be we're going to go ahead and remove the radiator and fan assembly. Uh, I'm going to do it all in one foul swoop. Up here we have the you know radiator well the radiator uh, bracket support bracket, uh, and there's two bolts, two 10 millimeter bolts. Okay, and out of that came nice and easy, and it looks like. It looks to me like, yeah, and these are just two more of these little pegs here that are in the bottom that hold it in. So next step will be to kind of we'll jack it up, take the wheel off. We're going to take that left strut tower out and uh, just pull the whole unit off. All right, now I have the Yamaha jacked up. I'll go ahead and take the wheels off or the wheel off here, then the strut tower off. Uh, then we'll get the radiator out of there. The whole process is pretty simple. Remove the tire, remove the strut tower, which is just a couple bolts, one up and one below. And then the radiator comes out pretty easy as well. It's got the two lines that connect to the radiator to supply fluid, and then a couple vacuum lines that route around the fan housing. Okay, and voila. Now you can see, I mean, I can, I can see through this. So it's actually, not quite as bad as I thought, but we're gonna go ahead and clean this up anyway. I'll, I'll show you how to do that uh, here in a minute. But um, it's definitely dusty and dirty, and it's just a good time. It's a good good chance to do them both, so we're gonna go ahead and do that. Okay, so as you can see, you can actually still, see, you can see light to the back of it. I mean, this is dirty, but it's not horrific, however, I'm gonna use this coil clean here and clean up the uh, radiator uh, so you can kind of see how that works. But we'll, uh, it'll definitely be a lot better than that.
After it sits for a few minutes, just rinse the rest off with fresh, clean, cold water to get all the coil cleaner out of the radiator. And that's quite a difference from where it started off. It's definitely got all that dust and stuff out of there. There's water in there now, uh, still in between the fins, but man, that is a lot, lot cleaner. Uh, definitely was dusty, definitely is gonna help uh, in the overall performance of the radiator. So uh, if you've gotta do this anyhow, just pull it out and, and take this extra step. Uh, it'll make it breathe a lot easier, cool a lot easier. Uh, that's just, you know, takes five minutes. Okay, so I thought I would take a minute here and show you the difference between new uh, versus the old fan. And this is why I said it's probably easiest when diagnosing this just to reach down, and, you know, after the engine's cool or whatever and try to spin that fan. Because when you, the new one spins nice and free, right? The old one is not so much. So there's no question there. This fan is shot. Um, and like I said, if every other piece is shot as well in terms of uh, the relays and whatnot, well, regardless, the fan is bad. So you have to replace it anyhow. Okay, so I have the radiator reinstalled back into the unit. It's just as simple as reversing the steps, so I didn't really film that. Um, it's really not hard to do, just reverse the steps of putting of taking it out when you go to put it in. The one thing I wanted to show you though before I put the strut tower back in and the wheel back on is the overflow bottle here uh, on the left-hand side. The Yamaha says as part of the process, fill this up to the full line. It's just a little easier to get in there when all this stuff's out of the way. So I would recommend filling that up after you put the radiator, radiator in and before you put the strut and tire back on. Uh, you may still need to add some to it, but it's just a heck of a lot easier to get into it this way. All right, here in a second, I'll uh, film uh, fill up the radiator and we'll go through flushing this, or uh, I'm sorry, uh, getting the air out of the lines. Okay, so once the radiator's back installed and you filled up the overflow bottle, the next thing to do is to remove the cap and fill the radiator. So, that's fine, put the cap over here. You can get a long funnel, that's great. This is kind of hard to, to reach in there. So this is the best I could find according to the manual to uh, make sure it's got, it asks for like, like to make sure it has glycol in it, pre-diluted, so on and so forth. So um, this met, met all the requirements that Yamaha was looking for. Stuff's not cheap. I mean, I guess it's been a while since I bought radiator fluid, but I don't know, it's like 30, 40 bucks a gallon or something. This takes just under three liters, so less, you know, there's like four liters in a gallon uh, when it's fully empty, and I'm sure there's still still some residual in there, but just start adding it in there. So you just top this radiator off, like a so, and then we're gonna go to the back of the uh, unit where the engine is, and we're gonna crack the bleeder valves back there until we see fluid come out uh, both on the bottom end and then by the thermostat that I installed. Once we see that, I'll come up here, I'll top off the radiator again, and then we're gonna start the unit. Okay, so I went ahead and marked it with a Sharpie, which one we're doing. So now we're doing the top part of this uh, uh, bleeding system. So I'll open just, all you gotta do is crack this open and wait till some fluid comes out. It's an eight millimeter wrench. I've got one of those, I'll put the bucket underneath there to catch any radiator fluid. And uh, once it starts leaking fluid out of there, you close it back up and then we'll move on to the thermostat. See air bubbles popping out of there. I think that's probably enough. Yeah, there we go. Look at that, primed it right up. Wait for another bottle, air bubble or two to come out. It seems like it's a solid fluid drip. Let's go ahead and run it back in. I think the torque spec on this is like 10 Newton meters, but you can just tighten it. Just don't over tighten it. That should be fine. Make sure it doesn't leak anymore. There. <clears throat> That's the big thing. Okay, let's move on to the thermostat bleed bolt. Okay, so here is the thermostat air bleed bolt. 
uh, in order to purge the system this way. Another eight millimeter bolt, we'll open that up. Okay, so there we finally have fluid coming out of the top bleeder bolt there. It's not, I mean, it drips here and there, uh, but you can see actually see the radiator fluid on this screw threads. So I'll go ahead and uh, run that back in and then we'll start the Yamaha up and go on to the next step. Okay, I just started it up, so we'll see. It says 10 minutes. We'll see what's happening here. Uh, I want to hear the fan kick on. That's my goal. That would be really nice. We'll see. Okay, so it ran for, actually it ran for about 15 minutes. I revved the engine a few times, topped off the radiator fluid after it's cooled down a little bit. And now I'm going to reinstall the cap and we're good to go. The fan did come on, so that fixed that problem. And uh, really that's, that's about it. So I'm pleased with how it turned out. Hopefully it helps you. Uh, if you like the video, please click like and subscribe and I'll keep going.